All right, what is up guys? Jared Campisi back in Dado's garage. Welcome back to the channel. Today's gonna be a lot of work and a lot of fun because we're gonna be tearing into this bad boy, removing the entire stock exhaust system from our Panigale in preparation for our full titanium Akrapovich Undertail exhaust system that cost over $8,200 and um, it's gonna be incredible. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, so get a good look at it, guys. This is the last time you're gonna see it together for a little while, because after we do the exhaust system, actually, we probably will put it together, so then we can do the uh, Sprint filter and the Bren flash, um, and then take it out for a ride and make sure everything works properly. But after that, we're gonna be tearing it all apart again, because all of the carbon fiber is coming from Moto Million. So um, we're gonna be doing, he actually has the carbon tank, the first one in the entire world, all the carbon fairings, carbon rear subframe. Uh, we have carbon wheels uh, that we're gonna use for now. We might be getting the Street Fighter, um, Lamborghini Street Fighter wheels. But um, yeah, there's gonna be a ridiculous amount of stuff coming. So don't forget, you can help support this project and be entered to win this bike. There's not a ton of people signed up right now. So you have an amazing odds of winning this bike. So patreon.com slash Customs. It's always the first link in the description below. That's how we fund these projects and that's how we're able to give them away whenever we're done. So um, we've got some big ass booklets here of directions. We, uh, <laughs> look at that. Dado's got his hands full today. So we're gonna be bagging and tagging everything, loosely following the directions. Sometimes they make you take apart more stuff than you really need to. All right, so before we start, we're gonna crack open a beer ski to uh, what really feels like the beginning of the build because now we're actually digging into the bike. So we're gonna do a Wolf Brewing, their local shop here, a Mojito Blonde Ale. Dado's gonna pour that. We got some sushi over here that we're eating. Well, there's actually a car show at Amici's uh, Pizza tonight from six to eight. So we're gonna try and make it over there to that to say hi to everybody. Actually doesn't look a little in my hand. Yeah, that looks like a normal size it's can a, right it's there. A, it's a crowler. And I forgot to mention um, in the MotoGP video, um, I just wanna say thanks for everyone who came up and said hello. Everybody was asking where Dotto was. You know, he, he's got stuff to do. So he wasn't, it was kind of a last minute trip, but um, I really appreciate all your support. And it was really cool to hear about all your bikes and how much we've inspired your builds and stuff like that. It's honestly incredible. And, and we met people who have 30 Ducatis. I met people who have bought four Ducatis this year, never owned one just because of you know our videos and stuff. So it's super cool to see that kind of stuff. And, and that's the reason why I'll, I'll, I'll continue to get opportunities to go to cool events and work with Ducati and do $100,000 Lamborghini inspired Panigales and stuff like that. So it's all because of you guys. So thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Cheers to another build. All right, so we're gonna start with removing side, basically, uh, before we even look at the directions, we know roughly because we have done this before, we've worked with Panigales, we've never done an Undertale exhaust system, um, and it's always hard to remember exactly what you did, you know, a year ago or whatever. But um, we're gonna start with removing all the side fairings, the belly fairing, the tank, the top piece here, uh, the seat, and then we're gonna kind of assess uh, what all we have access to. Manny actually did this exhaust on his uh, uh, V4 SP2, and he said there were some shortcuts you could use to make it a little bit quicker, um, but obviously we're gonna do whatever works for us. So uh, I'm really excited to get this big ass freaking exhaust out of here because it sounds like dog shit. I cannot stand it. And um, it's heavy as shit too. So this is when the bike's really gonna start to come alive and I'm really, really excited for this. All right, so we got the belly panels off and Dotto was going inside here for the inner fairings and uh, look what he found. <laughs> look at this shattered big ass broken part down here and this you literally can stick your finger through which means i'm gonna have to order hopefully it's not the whole headlight probably is though never had that happen on a bike ever my whole life i've right? i've been working have you on seen bikes it? and riding bikes for a long time i've never <laughs> 20 seen years that. 30 years i've never seen that in my entire 350 life. miles and somehow that happened well i saw this down i didn't even notice the hole i saw this down here and i was like i thought it was like cobweb or something i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck with Jarrett and and say hey look it's a crack and i was like wait that is a crack and then i was like that's not a crack and i look up here i'm like oh shit. <laughs> like what seriously like what the hell hit that a rock probably from yeah highway. but that must have been multiple rocks no one big rock will just knock that out and, and screw that up too, you're saying, at the same time? No, that piece is what, f that's this oh, piece. Oh, that's it that fell piece down sitting in down in there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought this was cracked down here That's too. what I thought at first, because gotcha. I was like, oh, look oh, at that. And then oh, I was like, oh, oh, shit. Wow, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to buy a headlight for a Panigale. Take, make your guess as how much that's gonna cost me. Jesus, I already spent, what, 32 for the bike? and then 8,000 for the exhaust. That's 40,000 right there. How many miles on this? 360 or something like that. Yeah. 
It's gonna, it's gonna add up real quick. I have bikes here from the 60s <laughs> that still have perfect Original headlights. headlights, I know, unbelievable. All right, side fairings finally coming off. This is the first time Dotto has actually seen or worked with the new side fairings. They're kind of a bitch, aren't they? They're a bitch. <laughs> Here. And bolts and dude and how heavy is that very heavy. I mean that is serious weight I think this is what the smell comes from you think so? smell that Everybody was laughing. I don't think that is <laughs> no everybody's well, laughing. They're like you guys are smelling fair <laughs> We're smelling Actually, motorcycle parts. I'm gonna put this back because this is one of the clips that Gets yeah. pushed in there. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. literally I just smell gasoline all the time. <laughs> That's all you smell with these bikes <laughs> Oh there man. That's a little clip. I was just yeah. gonna make sure I keep everything together. I actually, dude, while I was at MotoGP, guys, I was hanging out with the son of Marcassini. Um, so shout out to you, Federico. Federico? Federico? I think that's what it, Fede, is what we were calling him. Um, his family did, started Marcassini wheels, and he's actually the one that makes the TWM quick release gas caps and all the TWM special parts that we use. So it was pretty cool that I got to meet him. Super cool, nice guy. He's an engineer, he's like 24 years old, and they're making some really cool parts. So. Okay, well we have access to all kinds of shit here now, so that's good. Uh, we're definitely gonna be removing that guy because this is a servo motor, that's gonna be gone. We're gonna need to completely loosen this, I believe, and slide it forward to get access to the headers, which are, look at that, buried in there. Might even have to remove the fans, I'm not sure. But let's do the other side first. All right, we got the other side fairing off. And now we're starting to see access to header bolts, so that is good. Um, this is gonna be gone too, which is, very good because the bike will ran the bike actually randomly shut off on me a couple times which supposedly the stock exhaust with the charcoal is one of the culprits for that and i also realized uh the headlight is one assembly now that everything's off i was looking at it so you can't just buy a left hand side it's the entire headlight assembly i'm guessing that's going to be well over a thousand dollars maybe more so that's fun times uh dotto's working on the Servo motor. The servo motor right here. That's going to be attached to the stock exhaust. That all gets deleted because we don't need that on the new system. So that's good. And that thing is heavy. And we can put drugs in here. And now we got a drug stash. All right. Next thing we're going to do is stick to this side and basically have to move the entire rear set out of the way. So we loosen the pinch bolt right there. There were two bolts right there underneath it. And then he's basically just going to move that out of the way. And if you look, that was the bracket that, that holds the exhaust oh, up. Oh yeah, it right is. There, so. Okay, so we're gonna put this, we'll probably just leave it there for now and then continue to move on. We grabbed a, one bolt up there and then he was saying that this whole thing should just pretty much slide back out. It's very, which it's is really a, heavy. a much better design a zip tie holds. Than, the previous, than the previous one. The previous heat shard, heat shard. <laughs> heat, heat shield well, was a bit of a nightmare. So there's just one little zip tie holding some sort of cable there. It is. Sweet. Look, now we got access to the rear header. What is going on in here? <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? That is hilarious. <laughs> it's like they ran out of stuff, so they were just putting little tiny pieces together. Is that why it's so heavy? Dude, that's at least a two pounds. My probably. head's too big, but damn. That's funny. It probably fit on mine. Fit on Christina's. Like a little helmet. Yeah, that's funny. Look at these little headers. Yeah, that is crazy. There they are. And look, each bank has an oxygen sensor. That's pretty cool. Damn, yeah. Each each one. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, next thing we're doing is loosening up the um, brackets for the front radiator and oil cooler because we're basically going to have to slide this as far forward as we possibly can to not only get to the header bolts, but also to get to the um, O2 sensor plugs and stuff like that. So we're gonna have to take this whole thing apart. Probably pull the fans out too, but we'll see. Yeah, happens. the front um, right plug for the O2 sensor is right, right here. Yeah, there's a bolt right there. Right? Yeah, I see it. The it's it a little. Yeah. He also removed all the uh, springs from the exhaust. There was two in the back right here, and then two underneath right here. And then there, yeah. See, there's one of the O2 plugs. There's four on this exhaust. One for each uh, pipe coming out of the. Um, of the engine, so that's what we're gonna do. We gotta do the same thing on this side as well, and then eventually we'll get to this charcoal too. So I wanted to show you guys this real quick. Bagging and tagging everything, right radiator bracket, all those bolts, basically just all the fairing bolts, just keeping everything in really nice, neat order. And Dotto actually went around and took photos of everything too before he started taking stuff apart, so he knows exactly how it's supposed to go back together. 
and things yeah. are starting to pull apart now. That's good. I just have to get this part of the bracket off. Yep. I ended all <laughs> all the zip ties. So essentially, except for this one here, I can't yeah. get to it yet. Oh um, that plug gosh. is right back here. Yeah. You can tell it's zip tied, but it's this, this guy is right. Craziness. Here. There he is. There's the one of the O2 sensors in the front. Oops. Perfect. Okay, so we got a lot more access over here. We pulled the entire radiator bracket out. And next we're moving to this side to see what we can get access to if we do the exact same thing. So he's removing all these bolts here. We're gonna try and get this bracket completely out of the way. We might have to remove the fans, we're not sure. And then we should be able to slide this whole thing as forward as basically these hoses allow. All right, so the line for the uh, left-hand side O2 sensor actually goes all the way around here and loops around. So we had to remove all of that. Now we can unplug the O2 sensor. The reason why he's doing that before he takes the exhaust off is because um, basically it's gonna be hung up on there. It won't let us remove like the headers and all that. And there's no way to unscrew those without potentially screwing up the lines or the wire, I should say, yeah. for that O2 sensor right there. There's that one there. So, so we got all of them except for one of the rear ones, which the plug is underneath there. So that's why I have to take the tank off. So we're gonna cut a hole in the subframe. Perfect. <laughs> All right, next thing he's working on is the fans. Jeez, that's everything right there for the fans. Is that what that was? Mm -hmm. the, the harness? Just Jesus. the harness, yeah, crossover harness. And then I'm gonna try to move some of this out of the way and slide the pull fans this. out. You just gotta I be got very I got careful this. not to scratch anything. Yeah, there's a coolant line here that we can't jack up. I got the coolant line too. I don't know if we can or not uh, yet. Okay. But I'm gonna try, let's see. We might need to loosen the other side. Looks like it wants to come. There she is, fans. <laughs> oh God, okay, cool. All right, so that's actually where we're gonna leave the bike for right now. We're gonna run over to the uh, car show at the Amici's Pizza and grab some food and then we'll come back and continue and I figure why not just bring you guys along. I can show uh, our local business, support some local businesses and some good food. Their food's incredible. Maybe there'll be some cool cars or bikes there as well. So we're actually gonna swap out the R8. We're gonna hop in this thing, go back to the house and get in the GTR Pro because I haven't driven the GTR Pro for a long time. And um, the last time Christina jumped in the C8 to take it for a service, it didn't start. So uh, we gotta make sure that we drive the cars a little bit more. It's been winter time, so that's why we haven't been driving. All right, so I think Tina Wieners is gonna take the um, Urus because she's gonna get groceries afterwards. As much as I would like to take my R8, we gotta drive this thing. Um, not that I don't like it, but it is bumpy as shit and pretty uncomfortable for Pennsylvania roads. It is one of my favorite looking cars of all time and it sounds incredible, but um, it's just very uncomfortable for the roads in Pennsylvania. I think if you lived anywhere where you had nice streets, it'd be fine. Yeah, but for these roads, uh, not the best. But let's start it up real quick. Oh, it's been a while. Let's see if it starts. Hey, started right up. Let's see how it sounds. I like it. I forgot how much I like this car. It sounds so good. So that was my first time being behind this car when it did that under the on-ramp. Yeah, did you like that? It was, I, yeah, it both was of us thought thing. something broke like in our car. I was like, did I just hit something? It was so loud in here. We need to like, change this, shit. we need to change this tune. Yeah, it's it's really ridiculous. Do you want to rev it real quick for me? Yeah, you just have to tap. So we need to fix that. So, it, right, like, watch when I go up. It won't. It so won't let us rev past four. And then you got no pop. So yeah. You go up to three. Oh, see? It's too far it's still. So, it's so hard to get a perfect. There you it is. It has to be between two and three. There we go. Three, yeah. Yeah. 
if you go under. We need to change this tune. Quiet. We're gonna change it. It's really good when you're moving. Yeah, and then you get it's tons. Sound shifting on its yeah. Own. It sounds incredible. I don't it have looks to amazing anything. too. This car is insane. I could leave bug juice all over the window. Yeah, I know. We just washed it. All right, let's go look around. Look at this. We got our little bike corner here. I love this Ducati Desmo Sedici. I believe it's a 999. Clear or a dry clutch on it. Race fairings. Has an Undertale exhaust. Look how beautiful that thing is. Dado was saying these uh, these lights look like actual car car mirrors. Look at that. Actually, that's a really cool design. How they did that back here. That was very hot. I shouldn't have touched it. But look how sleek that is from this angle. It's crazy how far we've come. Like how the dashboards look compared to how they how they were back I love then. The frames on these are so simple. The trellis, yeah. I mean, it's, they're still beautiful bikes, you know. Like for how old they are. Think? Man, I don't know. Like, 2010, okay. 2008, somewhere in there, somewhere maybe even older. Then we have a ZX6R right here. I'm not a fan of the colors of the Ninjas, although somehow I ended up with two green bikes: my Lamborghini Diablo's green and the Lamborghini Street Fighter's green. It's got an M4 exhaust. I had one of those on my GSXR 600 back in the day. Nice little MT10. This is actually a really nice bike. They're super fun bikes for the street, especially with the Competition Works exhaust on it. Look at that. And the front end looks really cool on these. Looks like a Transformers, Transformers bike. So this is the local pizza shop, Amici's Pizza, that we're supporting today. Uh, they have amazing pizza and subs. Pretty much all their food's amazing. Um, we even have some local here. Well, I guess everybody's local. But you guys have seen the GT3 RS in my videos uh, back in the day. And then this is the guy that has the uh, McLaren uh, Gain 717. He also has a badass a CO, uh, Z06 C7 Corvette. I bet this thing is fast as shit. Gotta love white. Uh, with black accents, you've got the little carbon fiber hood accent there. But I want uh, Amir to take me for a ride in this thing because I've never been in a. Actually, I don't think I've ever been in a Porsche GT3 RS. Or I'm trying to think. I've even been in like I guess I drove a 911 Turbo, but it was an older model. But um, I think I'm gonna ask him if I can just use his wing as a uh, table for my sandwich. <laughs> So Dado and I are gonna split an Italian sub. We got everything, lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, oil and vinegar with, I think it's provolone cheese. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Look how incredible that looks. So freaking good. So we're gonna eat this, maybe go say hi to some people outside and then we're gonna get back to work. And that's the owner's car right there. GT4, Porsche, black on black. Well, I guess it's black with yellow stitching, but it looks incredible. So beautiful and clean, so again, Support Amici's if you guys are local in the Mechanicsburg, Camp Hill area, Central Pennsylvania. Great food, good people, and they love cars and motorcycles. Made it back to Dodsky's. This thing in this lighting, whew. I was thinking about trading this in along with the C8 Corvette since we don't know where the hell the Z06 is and getting a Ferrari 812 super fast. I don't know, this, this it's more fun than I remembered and less harsh than I remembered, but I just wanna try something different. So let me know what you guys think. Would you like to see an 812 on the channel? Straight piped Ferrari 812, what do you think? V12 would sound phenomenal. Never had one, you know? We'd have a V8, V10, V12 in the garage. With an exhaust. Yeah. All right, let's go inside. All right, so back to work. First thing he's doing is moving this entire, it's like an ABS sensor harness. ABS module. Module. I'm talking about the actual carrier, I guess. But anyway, he's moving all this out of the way so that we can get access to the heat shield because taking that heat shield off is gonna give us access to uh, the header bolts a lot easier. But look at that, we're getting close, guys. All right, so he just removed the uh, charcoal canister uh, bracket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're gonna move this out of the way. It's weird, in the directions it doesn't say anything about this, but as this is a race exhaust system, uh, I'm pretty sure this is not supposed to be on there, but we'll double check and make sure. 
whether we keep it on or not. Okay, I had to give him a hand. We pulled the heat shielding out. I'll tell you what, for not being titanium, these pipes look pretty good. So there's this piece gone. Uh, this big ass looking piece gone. All this shit gone, heat shielding, all that stuff. And uh, we're rocking and rolling. All right, we decided to take another little uh, whiskey break. Something we've never had before. A rampa, ramper, double cask. It's a single malt whiskey. And it is Indian, you said? Yeah, they're matured in American bourbon barrels and European oak sherry casks. I love the sherry finish. Me too. So, yeah, okay. I never really uh, dabbled much in Indian single malt whiskey. And I saw this and I was like, I gotta have it. It looks super cool. All right, let's pour ourselves some glasses. Let's crack it. I don't know, okay. We just smelled it. It actually smells really good. We're gonna do it, do it on ice this time. Change ice it up balls. A bit. We're not gonna smoke it, but you can get all of Dado's products on DadoMadeShop.com. Always right. linked in the description below, along with all of his social media links. Support your boys. Support your PA boys. Before we crack the manifold bolts, cheers to a uh, the most ex the most expensive build we've ever done. That is very unique and Holy very good. Holy shit, okay. That is very good. I don't know what I paid for this, I was gonna say. I need more. We need to get some more of this. That's very smooth. That's incredible. Cheers, fam. So before we crack the first header, header bolts, Dotto grabbed a little thing that he created for protecting radiators. You don't wanna mess up your fins. Look at how nice that is. Okay, so I'm gonna tape that on and we'll get the work loosening uh, all those bolts up there. There's three on each one. Header bolts coming off. Two done. Six. Minus two is four more to go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me get found a little ratcheting wrench. This is the tedious part, getting these freaking things off because we didn't take the whole radiator apart and the front wheel off and all the stuff they tell you to do. Even if we did all that, it's not worth it. Yeah, exactly. because, I agree. Because for the little time that I'm gonna have into this, now once we get to the two inner ones, they're a little bit of a pain in the ass. That's when you but... go to Swivel Town. Swivel Town, <laughs> Swivel Town, baby. Okay, all the header bolts. Uh, header nuts, I should say, are out on the front manifolds. That's nuts. That's nuts. What's next, Dodskis? Next is unbolt the muffler and uh -huh. squeeze the sucker down. Okay. That's down and out. Down and out. Ah! All right, we're making progress. Front header pipes are coming out. Look at this. See, the cooling system's not out. Everything's intact. The front wheel's still on. The sensors are still attached. There All we go. have to do is Drop Bring that, that down. sucker down. The only thing keeping us from really getting the header, the rear header down is the sensor. But I'll show you a little trick. Yeah. So we should be ready to pull this thing down. Jeez. Really, you don't have to take it off the whole way, but there's a bracket right here. Oh, okay. Um, I actually thought that this, I thought that the bolt that went through this bolted right on the back of this, but the exhaust actually pokes through. Oh, okay. This was keeping it from going down. Oh, okay, gotcha. Good job. Yeah. Slide this right back on here. This is insane. Just a little bit. This sits there. Yeah. Now the exhaust should <laughs> come right up. <laughs> there he's. There it is. There's little wood shavings in here. What's that from? <laughs> and then also, if you're wondering why this is cut, it's because this bolt got sheared off um, by how it was in factory. We never touched any of this stuff. This chain so was chain, actually hitting it on the other yeah, side. Yeah, the chain actually hit it. So instead of extracting it. it, since we're not gonna use this. Yeah, um, that comes out anyway. I just. Doesn't get reused, so there you go. Okay, um, that's out. Next line of business will be the rear headers. This is how Dado is getting to the rear top one. Is that what it is mm -hmm. on the right hand side? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that all the way in there. That's a pretty badass swivel right there. Lightweight, baby! The final header nut. Look at this, look where he's going from. All the way over, into right there. How funny is that shit? Dotto, the swivel master. Dotto throttles and swivel masters. Okay, so Dotto got all of the rear header nuts off. He's removing the uh, O2 sensors, and then we can pull off the rear headers. And yeah, so instead of um, taking the fuel tank and the seat and everything to get to the plug for this, which is underneath here, mm -hmm. um, I think we're gonna try to pull the headers off, loosen this, and then spin the headers instead of spinning this to, yep. and then try to put it back the same way. I think we have to, in order to remove this heat shield, this little piece, we may have to take everything apart, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid all that extra yep. work. Rear uh, header pipes are off. 
and then you can just see what he's doing. It's like a you like Chinese torture puzzle. Yeah, you gotta like turn it and undo the just so he doesn't twist the wires, basically, yeah. as, as he loosens it. But honestly, that takes a lot less time than removing the. It entire does. I'm gasket. just wondering if we're if I can get that little heat shield out. We'll see. Yeah. So this is pretty much it. You can see the wire is pretty much like not totally twisted fine. at all. Yep. We can set the sensor here. I can cover it with something. Yeah. And then that's off. There it is, so, dude. We're pretty much good. Make sure you save all the. Um, the Cadi says you gotta put new. Uh, where are they? Uh, Gaskets. This one doesn't have them. Yeah, they're on the back there. I don't see them. What a dick. <laughs> we yeah, we're gonna reuse those. Clean them or reuse them as long as. Unless not... they send us new ones with the new exhaust. They never right? do. No. You can see where the exhaust leaks. Oh yeah. Wow. This this one leaks more than the other. Yeah, one. you're right. Way to go to the uh -huh. We love you guys. We'll fix that. <laughs> okay, so we just got all the bolts out of this. And this is the moment of truth. Can we get to the... There it is. So we can get it, right? Yeah. We can get it off? We just gotta see if I can get to the other side. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, we'll, well, well we can it. get this side at least. That's yeah, awesome. We'll so yeah, we just confirmed you can get to all these bolts to remove the heat shielding right there. Now, when it comes to insulation, I don't know. But for now, to remove the entire stock exhaust, you can do it without taking the tank off. How much faith do you have in me? <laughs> to put the new one on? I mean, it depends. There might be things out of your control. I think you'll be able to do it. It just depends because, remember, this one comes all the way up under and, it, and attaches here. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, that just seems like so much work, Jared. This guy. Got the little heat shield out of there. All of the stock exhaust parts are officially off the bike. And I gotta say, the last time we did this on the V4, Carbon V4, because we only did the slip on, on the Carbon V4 SP, um, it was a lot more intense, I remember. But we also took the gas tank off. I think we even took the rear subframe off, remember that? Yeah. Because it looked like a street fighter. Even the front end was off for some reason. I don't know, we followed the directions a lot more. But I think that they've, they've changed the design a little bit and it's a lot, I don't want to call this easy, but watching Dotto do it obviously is easy, but um, it does seem a little bit more manageable. Like they've cleaned stuff up quite a bit more and there's a lot more space in certain areas so there you go the whole stock exhaust is off we're gonna wait to weigh it until the next episode whenever we unbox Let's see him peeking out back there unbox the full titanium acura undertail exhaust and that's when we'll weigh them side by side to find out the exact weight savings but man that thing is is pretty apart at this point but that's it so again you can be entered to win this bike patreon.com slash customs it's always the first link in the description below shout out to my boy dotskis for his hard work making it look easy as always Modalmillion.com. If you want to get parts for your motorcycles, use my code CAMPEZ to save yourself some money. If you like the video, give it a big old juicy thumbs up. Subscribe for more, and we'll see you all in the next one.